by Jeffrey Chaucer. Edited by D. Lang Purvis. This recording is based on the book The Canterbury Tales and Other Poems. The original text contains poems by Chaucer and a lot of notes and explanations by the editor. To view these, please click on the Gutenberg e-text link on the LibriVox catalog page of The Canterbury Tales. The Canterbury Tales. The Prologue. When that aprilis with his shower's swoot, the drought of March hath pierced to the root, and bathed every vein in such lacour, of which virtue engendered is the flower, when Zephyr seek with his swoot a breath, inspired hath in every holt and heath, the tender crops in the youngest son hath in the rim his half coursey run, and small fowls make melody that sleep in all the night with open eye, so pricketh them nature in their courages. Then long a folk to go on pilgrimages, and palmers for to seek strange strands, to fern hollows couth in sundry lands, and specially from every shire's end of England to Canterbury they wend, the holy blissful martyr for to seek, that them hath holpen when that they were sick. Befell that in that season on a day in Southwark at the tabard as I lay, ready to wend in on my pilgrimage to Canterbury with devout courage. At night was come into that hostelry, well nine and twenty in a company of sundry folk. By adventure ye fall in fellowship, and pilgrims were they all, that toward Canterbury would ride. The chamber and the stables were wide, and well we were in east at the best. And shortly, when the sun was to rest, so had I spoken with them every one, that I was of their fellowship anon, and made forward early for to rise, to take our way there as I you devise. But natheless, while I have time and space, ere that I farther in this tale pace, methinketh it accordant to reason to tell you all of the condition of each of them, so as it seemed to me, and which they were in, and of what degree, and eke in what array that they were in, and at a night then will I first begin. A night there was, and that a worthy man, that from the time that he first began to ridden out, he loved chivalry, truth and honor, freedom, and courtesy. Full worthy was he in his lord's war, and thereto had he ridden, no man far as well in Christendom as in heathenness, and ever honored for his worthiness at Alessander he was, when it was won. Full often time he had the board begun above all nations in Prussia, in Letua had he raised, and in Russia no Christian man so oft of his degree. In Grenade at the siege eke had he be of Algeser, and ridden in Belle Marie. At Lays was he, and at Saddley when they were won, and in the great sea at many a noble army had he be. At mortal battles had he been fifteen, and foughten for our faith at Tremacene, and lists thrice, and I slain his foe. This ilko worthy knight had been also some time with the lord of Palati against another heathen in Turkey and evermore he had a sovereign price. And though he was worthy, he was wise, and of his port as meek as is a maid. He never yet no villainy nay said in all his life, unto no man or wight. He was a very perfect gentle knight. But for to tell you of his array, his horse was good, but yet he was not gay. Of Fustian he weared a jippon, all besmottered with his hauberjan, for he was late to come from his voyage, and went afore to do his pilgrimage. With him there was his son, a young squire, a lover and a lusty bachelor, with locks crow as they were laid in press. Of twenty years of age he was, I guess. Of his stature he was of even length, and wonderly deliver, and great of strength. And he had been some time in Chevachy, in Flanders, in Artois, in Picardy, and borne him well as of so little space, and hoped to stand in in his lady's grace. Embroidered was he, as it were met, all full of fresh of flowers, white and red. Singing he was, or fluting all the day. He was as fresh as is the month of May. Short was his gown, with sleeves long and wide. Well could he sit on horse, and fair a ride. He could a songs make, and well indite, joust and eke dance, as well portray and write. So hot he loved, that by night or tale he slept no more than doth the nightingale. Courteous he was, lowly and serviceable, 
and carved before his father at the table. A yeoman had he, and servants no mo at that time, for him lestride so, and he was clad in coat and hood of green. A sheaf of peacock arrows, bright and keen under his belt, he bare full thriftily. Well could he dress his tackle yeomanly, his arrows droop not with feathers low, and in his hands he bare a mighty bow. A nuthead had he, with a brown visage, of woodcraft could he well all the usage. Upon his arms he bare a gay bracer, and by his side a sword and a buckler, and on that other's side a gay dagger, harnessed well, and sharp as point of spear. Christopher on his breast of silver sheen, and horn he bare, the baldric was of green. A forester was he, soothly, as I guess. There was also a nun, a prioress, that of her smiling was full simple and coy. Her greatest oath was but by St. Loy, and she was clepid Madam Eglantine. Full well she sang the service divine, and tuned in her nose full seemly. In French she spake full fair and fettisly after the school of Stratford at a bow, for French of Paris was to her unknow. At Meta was she well you taught withal. She let no morsel from her lippis fall, nor wet her fingers in her sauce deep. Well could she carry a morsel, and well keep that no drop a nay fell upon her breast, and courtesy was set full much her lest. Her over lip a white she so clean, that in her cup there was no farthing seen of grease, when she drunken had her draught. Full seemly after her meat she wrought, and sickerly she was of great disport, and full pleasant, and amiable of port, and pained her to counterfeit a cheer of court, and be a stately of manner, and to behold in dignity of reverence. But for to speaken of her conscience, she was so charitable and so piteous, she would a-weep if that she saw a mouse caught in a trap, if it were dead or bled. Of small a hounds had she, that she fed with roasted flesh and milk and wastel bread. But sore she wept if one of them were dead, or if men smote it with a yard a smart. And all was conscience and tender heart. Full seemly her wimple ye pinched was, her nose tretis, her eye in grey as glass, her mouth full small, and thereto soft and red, but sickerly she had a fair forehead. It was almost a span a brow, I trow, for hardly she was not undergrow. Full fetus was her cloak, as I was wear. Of small coral about her arm she bare a pair of beads, gauded all with green, and thereon hung a brooch of gold full sheen, on which first you written, in crown day, and after, Amor Vincent Omnia. Another nun also with her had she, that was her chapeline, and priestess three. A monk there was, a fair for the mastery, an outrider that loved venery, a manly man, to be an abbot able, full many a dainty horse had he in stable. And when he rode, men might his bridle hear jingling in a whistling wind as clear and eke as loud as doth the chapel bell there as his lord was keeper of the cell. The rule of St. Mary and of St. Benet, because that was old and some deal straight, this ilk a monk let older things pace, and held after the newer world the trace. He was not of the text a pulled hen that saith that hunters be not holy men, nay that a monk, when he is cloisterless, is like to a fish that is waterless. This is to say, a monk out of his cloister, the silk a text held he not worth an oyster. And I say his opinion was good. Why should he study and make himself wood upon a book and cloister always poor, or swinking with his hands, and labor as Austin bid? How shall the world be served? Let Austin have his swink to him reserved. Therefore he was a prickasaur all right, Greyhounds he had as swift as fowl of flight. Of prickering and of hunting for the hare was all his lust, for no cost would he spare. I saw his sleeves are filled at the hand with gris, and that the finest of the land. And for to fasten his hood under his chin, he had of gold you wrought a curious pin, a love knot in the greater end there was. His head was bald, and shone as any glass, 
and eke his face as it had been anoint he was a lord full fat and in good point his eye in steep and rolling in his head that steamed as a furnace of a lead his boots supple his horse in great estate now certainly he was a fair prelate he was not pale as a four-pined ghost a fat swan loved he best of any roast his palfrey was as brown as is a berry a friar there was a wanton and a merry a limitor a full solemn man and all the orders four is none that can so much of dalliance in fair language he had ye made full many a marriage of young a woman at his own cost unto his order he was a noble post full well beloved and familiar was he with franklins over all in his country and eke with worthy women of the town for he had power of confession as said himself more than a curate for of his order he was licentiate full sweetly heard he confession and pleasant was his absolution he was an easy man to give penance there as he wist to have a good pittance for unto a poor order for to give is sign that a man is well ye shrive for if he gave he durst make a vaunt he wist that the man was repentant for many a man so hard is of his heart he may not weep although him sore smart therefore instead of weeping and prayers men must give silver to the poor frères his tippet was i farced full of knives and pins for to give to fair wives and certainly he had a merry note well could he sing and play and on a rote of yettings he bare utterly the prize his neck was white as is the fleur de lis thereto he strong was as a champion he knew well the taverns in every town and every hostler and gay tapster better than a lazer or a beggar for unto such a worthy man as he accordeth not as by his faculty to have with such lazers acquaintance it is not honest it may not advance as for to deal with no such poor ale but all with rich and sellers of the tale and over all there is profit should arise courteous he was and lowly of service and asked no man nowhere so virtuous he was the best beggar in all his house and gave a certain frame for the grant none of his brethren came into his haunt for though a widow had but one shoe so pleasant was his in principio yet he would have a farthing ere he went his purchase was well better than his rent and rage he could and play as any whelp in love days there could he much ill help for there was he not like a cloisterer with threadbare scope as is a poor scholar but he was like a master or a pope of double worsted was his semicope that rounded him as a bell out of press somewhat he lisped for his wantonness to make his english sweet upon his tongue and in his harping when that he had sung his eye and twinkled in his head aright as do the stars in a frosty night this worthy limitor was called hubert a merchant was there with a forked beard and motley and high on his horse he sat upon his head a flandrish beaver hat his boots clasped fair and fettisly his reasons i spake he full solemnly sounding all way the increase of his winning he would the sea were kept for anything betwixt a middleburg and orwell well could he in exchange shields sell this worthy man full well his wit beset there wist in no wight that he was in debt so a stately was he of governance with his bargains and with his chevesence for sooth he was a worthy man withal but sooth to say i not how men him call a clerk there was of oxenford also that unto logic had a long ago as lena was his horse as is a rake and he was not right fat i undertake but looked hollow and thereto soberly full threadbare was his over his court pea, for he had not gotten him yet no benefice nay was not worldly to have an office for him was lever have at his bed's head twenty books clothed in black or red of aristotle and his philosophy and robes rich or fiddle or psaltery but all be that he was a philosopher yet had a he but little gold in coffer but all that he might of his friends hent on books and on learning he it spent 
and busily gan for the soul's prey of them that gave him wherewith to scully of study took he most care and heed not one word spake he more than was need and that was said in form and reverence and short and quick and full of high sentence sounding in moral virtue was his speech and gladly would he learn and gladly teach a sergeant of the law wary and wise that often had ye been at the parvis there was also full rich of excellence discreet he was and of great reverence he seemed such his words were so wise just as he was full often in a size by patent and by plain commission for his science and for his high renown of fees and robes had he many one so great a purchaser was nowhere none all was fee simple to him in effect his purchasing might not be in suspect nowhere so busy a man as he there was and yet he seemed busier than he was in terms had he case and doom as all that from the time of king will were fall thereto he could indict and make a thing there could a no white pinch at his writing and every statute could he plain by rote he rode but homely in a medley coat girt with a scent of silk with bare as small of his array tell i no longer tala a franklin was in this company white was his beard as is the daisy of his complexion he was sanguine well loved he in the morn a sop and wine to live in and delight was ever his one for he was epicurus owen's son that held opinion in plain delight was verily felicity per fight an householder and that a great was he st julian he was in his country his bread his ale was always after one a better and vine man was nowhere none without bake meat never was his house of fish and flesh and that so plenteous it snowed in his house of meat and drink of all the dainties that men could think after the sundry seasons of the year so changed he his meat and his super many full of fat a partridge had he in mew and many a bream and many a lucent stew woe was his cook but if his sauce were poignant and sharp and ready all his gear his table dormant in his hall always stood ready covered all the long a day sessions there was he lord and sire full often time he was knight of the shire an anlace and a gipsier all of silk hung at his girdle white as morning milk a sheriff had he been and the contour was nowhere such a worthy vavasor an haberdasher and a carpenter a webba a dyer and a tapasser were with a seek clothed in one livery of a solemn and great fraternity Full fresh and new their gear ye picked was, their knives were ye chipped not with brass, but all with silver wrought full clean and well, their girdles and their pouches every deal. Well seemed each of them a fair burgess to sitten in a guild hall on the dais, ever reach for the wisdom that he can was shapely for to be an alderman, for chattels had a they enough and rent, and eke their wives would it well assent, and Ella certain that they had been to blame. It is full fair to be a clept madame, and for to go to vigils all before, and have a mantle royally bore. A cook they had with them for the knowns, to boil the chickens and the marrow bones, and powder merchant tart and gallingal, well could he know a drought of London ale. He could roast and stew and broil and fry, make more truce and well bake a pie. But great harm was it, as it thought to me, that on his shin a mormal had a he for blanc manger that made he with the best a shipman was there one far by west for aught i wot b was of dartmouth he rode upon a rouncy as he couth all in a gown of falding to the knee a dagger hanging by a lace had he about his neck under his arm adown the hot summer had made his hue all brown and certainly he was a good fellow Full many a draught of wine had he ye draw, From Bordeaux ward, while the chapmen sleep, Of a nice conscience took he no keep. If that he fought, and had the higher hand, By water he sent them home to every land, But of his craft to reckon well his tides, 
his steam is and his strand is him besides his herberal his moon and laud manage there was none such from hull unto carthage hardly he was and wise i undertake with many a tempest had his beard been shake he knew well all the havens as they were from scotland to the cape of finister in every creek in Britain and in Spain, his barge eclipsed was the Magdalene. With us there was a doctor of physic, and all of this world was there none him like, to speak of physic and of surgery, for he was grounded in astronomy. He kept his patient a full great deal in hours by his magic natural. Well could he fortune the ascendant of his images for his patient. He knew the cause of every malady were it of cold or hot or moist or dry and where engendered and of what humour he was a very perfect practiser the cause you know and of his harm the root and on he gave the sick man his boot full ready had he his apothecaries to send his drugs and his lecturies for each of them made other for to win their friendship was not new to begin well knew he the old escalopus and Dioscorides, and Eke Rufus, Old Hippocras, Holly and Gallian, Serapion, Rassus and Avicen, Averroes, Damascene, and Constantine, Bernard and Gattiston, and Gilberton. Of his diet measurable was he, for it was of no superfluity, but of great nourishing and digestible. His study was but little on the Bible, in sanguine and in purse he glad was all lined with taffeta and with sendal and yet he was but easy of dispense he kept that he won in the pestilence for gold in physic is a cordial therefore he loved gold in special the good wife was there of beside bath but she was some deal deaf and that was scath of cloth making she had in such an haunt she passed them of ypres and of gaunt and all the parish wife was there none that to the offering before her should gone and if there did certain so wroth was she that she was out of all a charity her cover chiefs were full fine of ground i durst to swear they weighed a ten pound that on sunday were upon her head her hosen were of fine scarlet red full straight ye tied and shoes full moist and new bold was her face and fair and red of hue she was a worthy woman all her life. Husbands at the church door had she had five, without an other company in youth. But thereof needeth not to speak as nooth. And thrice had she been at Jerusalem. She had a past many a strange stream. At Rome she had been, and at Boulogne, in Gallus and St. James, and at Cologne. She could have much of wandering by the way. Gat-toothed was she, soothly for to say. Upon an ambler easily she sat. He wimpled well, and on her head and hat as broad as is a buckler or a targe, a foot-mantle about her hips large, and on her feet a pair of spurs sharp. In fellowship well could she laugh and carp of remedies of love she knew perchance, for of that art she could the older dance. A good man there was of religion, that was a poor parson of a town, but rich he was of holy thought and work, and he was also a learned man, a clerk, that Christ's gospel truly would he preach, his parishions devoutly would he teach. Benign he was, and wonder diligent, and in adversity full patient, and such he was he proved often scythes, full loth were him to curse for his tithes, but rather would he given out of doubt unto his poor parishions about of his offering and eke of his substance he would in little thing have sufficience wide was his parish and houses far asunder but he nay left naught for no rain nor thunder in sickness and in mischief to visit the farthest in his parish much and lit upon his feet and in his hands a staff this noble example to his sheep he gaffed that first he wrought, and afterward he taught. Out of the gospel he the word is caught. In this figure he added yet thereto, That if gold rust, what should iron do? For if a priest be foul on whom we trust, No wonder is a lewd man to rust. And shame it is, if that a priest take keep, To see a shitten shepherd and clean sheep. Well ought a priest and sample for to give, 
by his own cleanness how his sheep should live. He set a knot his benefice to hire, and left his sheep encumbered in the mire, and ran unto London, unto St. Paul's, to seek him a shantery for souls, or with a brotherhood to be withhold. But dwelt at home, and kept a well his fold, so that the wolf nay made it not miscarry. He was a shepherd, and no mercenary. And though he holy were, and virtuous, he was to sinful men not dispiteous, nor of his speech a dangerous nor dime, but in his teaching discreet and benign, to draw on folk to heaven with fairness, by good ensample was his business, but it were any person obstinate, whatso he were of high or low estate, him would he snib a sharply for the knowns, a better priest I trow that nowhere none is. He waited after no pomp nor reverence, nor maked him a spiced conscience, but Christ is Lord, and his apostles twelve he taught, and first he followed it himself. With him there was a ploughman, was his brother, that had he laid of dung full many a father. A true swinker and a good was he, living in peace and perfect charity. God loved he best with all his heart at all the times, were it gain or smart, and then his neighbor right as himself. He would a thresh, and there to dyke and delve, for Christ's sake, for every poor wight, without an hire, if it lay in his might. His tithes paid he full fair and well, both of his proper swink and his chattel, and at a tabard he rode upon a mare. There was also a reeve and a millera, a sompner and a pardoner also, a mansiple and myself, there were no mo. The miller was a stout carl for the knowns, full big he was of brawn and eke of bones. That proved well, for over all where he came, at wrestling he would bear away the rein. He was short-shouldered, broad, a thick at gar. There was no door that he hold heave off bar, or break it at a running with his head. His beard as any so or fox was red, and there too broad, as though it were a spade. Upon the cop right of his nose he had a wart, and thereon stood a tuft of hairs red as the bristles of a sow's ear. His nose thurls black were and wide, a sword and buckler bare he by his side. His mouth as wide as was a furnace. He was a jangler and a golardice, and that was most sin and harlotrize. Well could he steal a corn and toll a thrice, and yet he had a thumb of gold, pardy. A white coat and a blue hood weared he. A bagpipe well could he blow and sound, and therewithal he brought us out of town. A gentle mansiple was there of a temple, of which Akaturs might a take and sample, for to be wise and bine of the tale. For whether that he paid, or took by tale, Algate he waited so in his acate, that he was I before in good estate. Now is not that of God a full fair grace, that such a lewd man as which shall pace the wisdom of and heap of learned men? Of masters had he more than thrice ten, that were of law expert and curious, of which there was a dozen in that house, worthy to be stewards of rent and land of any lord that is in England to make him live by his proper good, in honour debtless, but if he were would, or live as scarcely as him list desire, and able for to help in all a shire, in any case that might a fall or hap, and yet this manspool set there all her cap. The reeve was a slender choleric man, his beard was shaved as high as ever he can, his hair was by his ears round you shorn, his top was docked like a priest before full long over his legs, and full lean, e like a staff. There was no calf you seen. Well could he keep a garner in a bin. There was no auditor could on him win. Well wist he by the draught and by the rain, the yielding of his seed and of his grain. His lord's sheep, his neat and his dairy, his swine, his horse, his store, and his poultry were wholly in this reeve's governing and by his covenant gave he reckoning. Since that his lord was twenty year of age, there could no man bring him in a rearage. There was no bailiff, herd, nor other hind, that he nay knew his slight and his covine. They were a drought of him, as of the death his wanning was full fair upon, and heath with green trees as shadowed was his place. He could a better than his lord purchase, full rich he was he stored privily, his lord well could he please subtly, to give and lend him of his own good, and have a thank, and yet a coat and hood. 
In youth he learned, had a good mister, he was well good right, a carpenter. This reeve sat upon a right good stot, that was all palmly grey, in height a scot. A long surcoat of purse upon he had, and by his side he bare a rusty blade. Of Norfolk was this reeve, of which I tell, beside a town man Clepin Baldswell. Tucked he was, as is a friar about, and never rode the hinderest of the rout. A saltner was there with us in that place, that had a fire-red cherubin's face, for sauce flame he was, with eye and narrow, as hot he was, and lecherous as a sparrow, with scallop brows black, and pilled beard, of his visage children were sore afeard, and as quicksilver, litharge, nor brimstone, bore a cerus, nor oil of tartar none, nor ointment that would cleanse or bite, that him might help him of his welkus white, nor of the knobs sitting on his cheeks. Well loved he garlic, onions, and leeks, and for to drink strong wine as red as blood. Then would he speak, and cries he were wood, and when he well drunken had the wine, then would he speak no word but Latin. A few terms knew he, two or three, that he had learned out of some decree, no wonder is, he heard it all the day. And eke ye know and well how that a jay can clap and wat as well as can the pope. But who so would another thing him grope, that he had spent all his philosophy, I quistio quid juris, would he cry. He was a gentle harlot, and a kind, a better fellow should a man not find. He would a suffer for a quart of wine, a good fellow to have his concubine a twelve-month, and excuse him at the full, Full privily a finch eke could he pull, and if he found o where a good fellow, he would teach him to have none aw, in such a case as the archdeacon's curse. But if a man's soul were in his purse, for in his purse he should ye punished be. Purse is the archdeacon's hell, said he, but well I wot he lied right indeed. Of cursing ought each guilty man to dread, for curse will slay right as a sailing sabbath, and also wear him of significat. In danger had he at his own guise, the younger girl was of the diocese, and knew their counsel, and was of their reed. The garland had he set upon his head, as great as if it were for an ale stake. A buckler had he made him of a cake. With him there rode a gentle pardoner, of Ronceville, his friend and his compare. That straight was coming from the court of Rome. Full loud he sang, Come hither, love, to me. The sompner bare to him a stiff burden, was never trump of half so great a sound. This pardoner had hair as yellow as wax, but smooth it hung, as doth a strike of flax. By ounces hung his locks that he had, and therewith he his shoulders overspread. Full thin it lay by culpins one in one, but hood for jollity he weared none, for it was trussed up in his wallet. Him thought he rode all of the new aget, to shevel, save his cap, he rode all bare, such glaring iron had he as in hair. A vernicle had he sewed upon his cap, his wallet lay before him in his lap. Fretful of pardon, come from Rome all hot. A voice he had as small as hath a goat, no beard had he, nor ever one should have. As smooth it was as it were new ye shave, I trow he were a gelding or a mare. But of his craft from Berwick unto Ware, nay was there such another pardoner, for in his mail he had a pillow bear, which, as he said, was Our Lady's veil. He said he had a gobbet of the sail that St. Peter had, when that he went upon the sea, till Jesus Christ him hent. He had a cross of Latin fowl of stones, and in a glass he had pig's bones. But with these relics, when that he fawned, a poor parson dwelling upon land, upon a day he got him more money than the parson got in Munneth's tway, and thus with feigned flatterings and japes he made the parson and the people his apes. But truly to tell in at the last, he was in church a noble ecclesiast. Well could he read a lesson or a story, but alderbast he sang an offertory. For well he wist a, when that song was sung, he must a preach and well afile his tongue, to win silver as he right well could. Therefore he sang full merrily and loud. Now have I told you shortly in a clause the estate, the array, the number, 
and eke the cause why that assembled was this company in southwark at this gentle hostelry that heighta the tabard fast by the bell but now is time for you to tell how that we bear in us that ilk night when we were in that hostelry aright and after will i tell of our voyage and all the remnant of our pilgrimage but first i pray you of your courtesy that ye are it not my villainy though that i plainly speak in this matter to tell in you their words and their cheer not though i speak their words properly for this ye know and also well as i whoso shall tell a tale after a man he must rehearse as nigh as ever he can every word if it be in his charge i'll speak he ne'er so rudely and so large or else he must tell his tale untrue or feign things or find a words new he may not spare although he were his brother he must as well say one word as another christ spake himself full broad and holy writ and well ye wot no villainy is it eke plato saith whoso that can him read the words must be cousin to the deed also i pray you to forgive it me as have i not set folk in their degree here in this tale is that they shouldn't stand my wit is short ye may well understand great cheer made our host us every one and to the supper set he us anon and served us with victual of the best strong was the wine and well to drink us lest a seemly man our host was withal for to have been a marshal in an hall a large man he was with eye and steep a fairer burgess is there none and cheap bold of his speech and wise and well he taught and of manhood a lacked him right not eke thereto he was right a merry man and after supper playin he began and spake of mirth amongst other things when that we had a made our reckonings and said of us now lordings truly ye be to me welcome right heartily for by my troth if that i shall not lie i saw not this year such a company at once in this herbero them is now fain would i do you mirth and i wist how and of a mirth i am right now bethought to do you ease and it shall cost naught ye go to canterbury god you speed the blissful martyr quite you your mead and well i wot as ye go by the way ye shapen you to talken and to play for truly comfort nor mirth is none to ride by the way as dumb as stone and therefore would i make you disport as i said erst and do you some comfort and if you liketh all by one assent now for to stand in at my judgment and for to work in as i shall you say to-morrow when ye ride in on the way now by my father's soul that is dead but ye be merry smiteth off mine head hold up your hands without more speech our counsel was not long afore to seech us thought it was not worth to make it wise and granted him without more of eyes and bade him say his verdict as him lest lordings quoth he now hearken for the best but take it not i pray you in disdain this is the point to speak it plat and plain that each of you to shorten with your way in this voyage shall tell in tales tway to canterbury word i mean it so and homeward he shall tell in other two of adventures that willem have befall and which you that beareth him best of all that is to say that telleth in this case tales of best sentence and most solace shall have a supper at your aller cost here in this place sitting by this post when that ye come again from canterbury and for to make you the more merry i will myself gladly with you ride right at mine own cost and be your guide and whoso will my judgment with say shall pay for all we spend in by the way and if ye vouchsafe that it be so tell me anon without words mo and i will early shape me therefore this thing was granted and our oath we swore with full glad heart and prayed him also that he would vouchsafe for to do so and that he would be our governor and of our tales judge and repertoire and set a supper at a certain price and we will ruled be at his device in high and low and thus by one assent we be accorded to his judgment and thereupon the wine was fetten on we drunken and to rest went each one without any longer tarrying a morrow when the day began to spring up rose our host and was our aller cock and gathered us together in a flock and forth we ridden all a little space 
unto the watering of St. Thomas. And there our host began his horse arrest, and said, Lords, hearken if you lest, to weet your foreword, and I it record, if even song and morning song accord, let's see now who shall tell of the first tale. As ever may I drink a wine or ale, whoso is rebel to my judgment shall pay for all that by the way is spent. Now draw ye cuts, ere that ye farther twin, he which that hath the shortest shall begin. Sir Knight, quoth he, my master and my lord, now draw the cut, for that is mine accord. Come near, quoth he, my lady prioress, and ye, sir clerk, let be your shamefastness, nor study not, lay hand to every man. And on to draw, and every white began, and shortly for to tell him as it was, were it by adventure, or sort, or cost, the sooth is this, the cut fell to the knight, of which full blithe and glad was every white, and tell he must his tale as was reason, by foreword and by composition, as ye have heard. What needeth words mo? And when this good man saw that it was so, as he that wise was and obedient to keep his foreword by his free assent, he said, Sithen, I shall begin this game. Why, welcome be the cut in God as name. Now let us ride, and hearken what I say. And with that word we ridden forth our way. And he began with right to Mary cheer his tale and on, and said, as you shall hear. End of the General Prologue